we have some eggs coming from a lady who lives close to us who's got a couple of roosters. So we're gonna be getting some hatching eggs. And so we went to get a incubator from Wilco and we're going to incubate some eggs and hatch some baby chicks, the little wee teeny teeny tiny little things. I've been seeing other people's YouTube videos for years now of them hatching their own eggs and things like that and I really really want to do it. Um, Brian is kind of against having <laughs> roosters because we did have a rooster for a good long while but we never he never wanted to hatch eggs because we might get more roosters but since then we've started um, kind of processing our older laying hens as they get too old and are probably close to death themselves anyways and putting them into freezer camp. And so now we are a little bit more accustomed to that process. So if we end up with roosters, we can butcher them and put them in the freezer and have nice, nice roosters put in, in the pot. <laughs> um, another idea we're floating around is maybe having a rooster that say lives with us for a little while long enough to get a new batch of hatching eggs that we can put into the incubator and do another round so that we have a kind of a cycle <laughs> of, of soon to be deceased roosters adding laying hens to our flock <laughs> so so we we thought it would be fun to unbox the incubator. I've never seen anybody do that. So I thought, well, this would be perfect opportunity to maybe do something kind of new. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it. All right. Now, before we do that, I was wondering, is, does this have anything to do with the coronavirus? Are you worried about um, being really self-sufficient with our chickens and not have to rely on buying chicks from the store? No, I'm worried about you selling all my eggs and me not being able to bake cookies. <laughs> well, we I'm cookies. more worried about other people's panicking and wanting to buy all our eggs, which which is nice. It's good that people buy our eggs, but I'd, I'd like to have make sure I have enough for myself too. And right now we kind of skimp by a little bit. There, I, I don't have enough to have breakfast with eggs every day. Like I like, I like to have a hard boiled egg or a pickled egg for breakfast and I don't always get that because there's not enough. Yeah. And it'd just be good to have more. We had our, our problem with the raccoon recently and so we don't have as much as we did. Yeah. And it'd be good to replace those and to come up with a little bit way better way of being sustainable with the chickens than we are right now because we you know we order them and we get a box of chicks from the post office. They come from like McMurray McMurray or one of those other ones. Um, and yeah, well, and while that's really nice and we always have good luck with, with getting them that way, I think it, it'd be really fun to have them ourselves. I think it will be fun to see the chicks hatch. Yeah. Although I'm I'm not quite sure how we're gonna if we're gonna get lucky enough <laughs> to actually catch it on camera because no, you I, know we we might get little heck holes and stuff like that that we can watch on camera, but I think more than likely we're gonna have yeah. You know, look, there's some chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be fine because they'll be teeny tiny little chicks and a lot of people have never seen them when they're a day old. So yeah, that'll be fun. So we're opening the box here in our special projects room. And uh, just because just we've got lights and it's a good, comfortable place to do it. We'll actually be setting this up, the incubator up in our utility room. Yeah, laundry yeah. room. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. So 
ours did come with the egg turner and so that's what this is is to turn the eggs you can kind of see how it will crank those around just a tiny bit um, we've got some really good instructions wow these are awesome I mean, when do you see instructions like this anymore, where you can actually read the print? Without a magnifying glass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many eggs did you want to get for our first batch? I think we're getting 20, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 24. Actually, we're getting 24 because we're getting two dozen, so, so we, you know, we won't even we fill half of this so it, it will be good so this is the professional farm grade deluxe incubator from little giant we could put quail rails in here if we ever decided we wanted to do quails i'd really like to do quails at some point but brian's a little bit i don't think he wants to build another place for animals <laughs> it's a lot of work just for little tiny eggs too i don't know yeah but leave a comment and tell us what you think of us having quails because comments will, will make us want to have quails if people are interested in them. Brian is highly YouTube motivated. <laughs> okay, so 46 chicken eggs, 118 quail eggs, 90 pheasant eggs, or 40 turkey eggs. That would be a lot of turkeys. Wow, that's way too many turkeys. That's about right for chicken eggs though. <laughs> Four. I can't imagine having 46 just for two of us though. Um, and, and the people we sell them to obviously as well. But yeah, I would like to do quails at one point though. So cool, we're all ready to have our little chick eggs now get them set up i'm gonna go plug this in just in case because the we'll lady's it supposed to well she's supposed to tell me when i can come get them if i can come get them tomorrow maybe even so i want to make sure that it gets warmed up for a good you know at least 12 hours before then so that it's ready to go hi so i'm back and it's the next day and I went to a parking lot and using a face mask, it's good social distancing, I picked up these hatching eggs and so they're all nice and fertilized and I'm going to show you guys just how lovely and beautiful they are. We've got some chocolate brown ones and some nice dark brown ones, some more pinky colored, lots of nice greens and blues, so they're really beautiful. Um, and each box is equally lovely. So you can see that, they're really nice eggs. Um, and I didn't pay really an exorbitant amount for these. So um, when you buy chicks from a hatchery, usually you're paying between probably around 350 to maybe up to seven or eight dollars each chick from the hatchery and then you have shipping which is really expensive um, unfortunately the large part of what you're paying for sometimes is the shipping costs especially if you're ordering in smaller numbers like we usually do there's only two of us and even though we do sell some of our eggs we don't have that big of a crazy amount that we need so um, we try and keep around 50 chickens to have eggs for us and have eggs for the people who we, we sell them to. And so that is the number that we want to maintain and we want to make sure that we can get those, those, we want to make sure that we can get the, the chickens that are at their retiring age processed and put into the freezer when it's time um, because otherwise they're just eating feed that 
could otherwise go to a chicken that's going to produce us eggs. And so that's kind of the way we try and look at it is that, that the homestead has to produce for us. Otherwise, we can't afford to keep all these animals. It's just too much. And so it has to keep producing. Otherwise, we don't have enough eggs to get people. And right now, it's really important that people get their eggs. They're, they're depending on us. So, um, yeah, so, so that's one of the reasons we got these is because we need the eggs, they need the eggs, and we want it to be dependable. Um, so hopefully this will kind of make it so that we can keep being sustainable on our homestead and kind of also because I think this will be a less expensive option for us to do this because we have been spending too much money getting the chicks. Um, when we're lucky we can find them at the feed store but it's really not an option right now and so if we wanted some we would have to order them or go this route and I added this up and this is for about the same amount of chicks is roughly the same amount of money for the incubator and the eggs. Um, we may not get a full 24 chicks obviously but I'm looking at this as as the next time this incubator is now free I've paid for it so um, even if I have to go get more fertilized hatching eggs again it's a lot less money than even getting them at the feed store so so that's kind of how I'm looking at it is that eventually this will make the cost of our eggs a little bit better for us because right now we don't really break even <laughs> we we kind of almost give the eggs away it, and it, that's a little bit unfortunate because they're very good eggs they've got lovely color people are very happy with them um, and I don't want to deprive them of them for the price that we're giving them because they can't afford them to be more expensive so this is a good option for us and hopefully it will make us a little bit more sustainable. So, from what I understand, I should be able to just kind of put these in here. Um, I've been checking the temperature and the humidity today and that's all good. And it's interesting because you actually want to put the eggs pointy side down and <laughs> I'm so used to doing it the other way when I put them into um, my egg cartons. So we're going to do it pointy side down and I'm just going to space them just, just in case one of them ruptures or something like that because that, that can happen. You can have an egg that has some bacteria or something in it or there's a fracture or something that you didn't see when you were putting them in and that can make the egg sitting there for a good long time and it's warm and so it can just basically explode and so if that happens it's kind of a mess and you need to clean it up off of the eggs that get affected but you don't want it to affect the bloom on it you want to keep that bloom and so that's hard to do if you've got kind of a, a big mess on it so um, I'm trying to avoid making this brooder become unsanitary within a use or two, so. <laughs> and I'm kind of just looking at them. I'm, I didn't want to go through the effort of getting something to candle them and things like that. I just don't have something like that right now. Um, so. If we, we start doing our own eggs, then I probably will get an egg candler just so that I can examine them more closely, but I'm not going to do that this time. Nope. It's funny because these green and blue eggs, they tend to get a lot more of the calcium deposit kind of thing happening. Some of my eggs do this as well. It's very strange. I'm, I'm curious if other people have that happen. at the 
this one more closely because it does have a little bit of stuff on it, but I think it's fine. It's not cracked or anything. Room, so I'm just going to, I think, go around the edges and put a couple in some areas. Not that it makes any difference, but... <laughs> so that's all 24 eighths in. down again. Let's see those for Brian who does her egg production. He gets the eggs all cleaned up and nice for the customers and boxes them up. So so we are at 89.4 degrees and 49% humidity. Um, we may actually add a tiny bit of water in here if that doesn't jump up some, but um, I think it should probably be fine. It probably will come up because it is really damp this time of year. Spring in the Pacific Northwest is wet. And so we always have a lot of humidity. And right here, we're close to this um, drain for our utility room. So I think the humidity in here will We'll almost naturally add some, but we'll we'll watch it because I've never done this before. I don't really know if that will be the case. It, I'm and I may have to add water at some point. So it's really wet and rainy today, so that could be why the humidity was up higher earlier. Because earlier it was something like 55 percent, which is on the higher end. So I'm just gonna watch it today and the rest of the hatching, and we will probably check in with you guys a few times along the way just to kind of talk about what, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and because this is a very inexpensive option for people so the last thing I'm going to do is I need to figure out a plug situation down here for my my incubator because I kind of need this plug because that's to my washing machine for right now I'm just gonna unplug my washing machine and I'll plug this in and we'll get a plug that we can use for over here either by getting an extension cord to run somewhere else or something like that so yeah so that's it for today thank you